Following the story of Jujutsu Kaisen, one thing I have noticed is that there really isn't any training arcs in this story. But is that really a bad thing? In this day and age where the long-running shonen is becoming slowly extinct, isn't it better now not to have any training arcs to speed up the pace of the story? Even from Demon Slayer up until Season 3, we had episodes dedicated to Tanjiro's training, but that's literally just a few episodes. It's not like there's an entire arc dedicated to it, or even a stretch of like 10 to 15 episodes just solely focusing on the main characters getting stronger due to intense training. Now, you will hardly get that now, and Jujutsu Kaisen is a prime example of how to essentially forget about training arcs and let your characters get stronger on the fly during their fights and moments of stress. Now, as your tribal chief, I have to listen to both sides of the fandom. I understand the frustration from some fans not seeing the characters going through some training in order to get to the power level that they are. Some may even call the power-ups at the last second a bullshit power-up that doesn't make any sense. I think a popular term of the years in the anime community is the Nakama power-up where the character would get enraged and pushed to the brink emotionally from the main villain. The most famous and iconic example straight from the top of my head is Goku turning Super Saiyan for the first time. Now, we can go fully into detail with the foreshadowing of the Super Saiyan, as well as the benefits of Saiyans getting the Zenkai boost, but take away the technicalities of the story itself and look what happened from a narrative perspective. And you can see Goku seeing his best friend Krillin dying in the hands of Frieza which triggered Goku to such a point that the anger itself gave him extra ki and energy in order for him to transform into a Super Saiyan. This example, you can make a strong argument that a Nakama power-up was used for Goku. Obviously, there's a lot more going on behind the scenes in this portion of the Namek saga, but essentially, this is the origin and the prime example of the Shonen Nakama power-up in the modern era. Now, what Jujutsu Kaisen has been doing is avoiding that having the characters go through battle and get a power-up through a way of technicality rather than having an emotional power-up like how Frieza pushed Goku in order for him to go into Super Saiyan. An example we can use that was recently animated from Season 2 of Jujutsu Kaisen was when Gojo used Reverse Curse technique properly for the first time to recover from the injuries that Toji gave him during the Gojo Past arc. Throughout that arc, we have seen Gojo try and use Reverse Curse technique already but have no success with it. In Season 1, which was nearly a decade ahead of the Gojo Past arc, we have already seen Gojo use Reverse Curse technique. So us fans, we know he can use it but we just didn't know how how he could do it or how he did it the first time. Gojo obviously is the strongest character in the verse so him nearly dying in battle and learning reverse curse technique I wouldn't call it a Nakama power up because remember guys Akutami loves to use the traditional shonen cliches and make a little twist onto them so normally the main shonen hero would get the power up because he's fighting for his friend. Well in this case it's because Gojo was thinking about saving Riko, which led to Toji into having an opening to cut through his infinity and stabbing him up with the inverted spear of heaven, which basically goes against the very trope that the anime community has been making fun of for years. But because Gojo is a special type of character even within his own story, you can actually see Gojo on the brink of death having a moment of clarity to save himself at the last second because he's so stupidly overpowered. But it's not just Gojo. We had 15-fingered Sukuna go up against Mahuraga who had never lost a fight before. Now, even though Sukuna wasn't still at full power, he was still arguably the second strongest character in the verse. But even him at that stage would have struggled against Mahuraga if Mahuraga adapted to all of Sukuna's techniques at that time. It adapted to the slice attacks, but it didn't adapt to the fire arrow. Now, forget the fact that it's the two strongest characters in the verse. Both of these characters with these examples fought against characters that could have easily killed them in these scenarios. But both of them found a logical way to get out of a tight spot in order to win the fight. There was no emotional power-up, it was just pure logic. Gojo learning reverse curse technique on the 11th hour which allowed him to use that technique and generate hollow purple but combining both cursed amplification and reverse curse technique. Sukuna noticed that Mahoraga has the ability to adapt to attacks and when he adapted to Sukuna's slice attacks and don't forget Mahoraga is super strong and was punching Sukuna through buildings here in this fight. It was not plain sailing for Sukuna in this fight and because of Mahoraga's ability to adapt, you would think that maybe Sukuna would lose here. But just before Mahoraga had any more opportunities to adapt to any other techniques, 
Shukuna unleashes a monstrous fire arrow attack, burning Maharaga to pieces. And again, this was also logical thinking. Sukuna has to unleash a monster finishing move with enough destructive power to finish off Maharaga in one hit. Similar to Gojo's hollow purple attack, the fire arrow did manage to do what Sukuna needed it for it to do. There was no need for any training arcs here. We just saw two badass characters in the heat of the moment use their tactical minds in battle to win. Now again, these two are the peak of jujitsu power, so of course they wouldn't need any training. However, what I've noticed in the story is that usually Akutami saves the best character moments and interactions for fights. That's how the series has always been. It feels like people really wanted a training arc of some sort, when in reality most of the characters get their power-ups through the fights. Whatever training that does happen in the story is usually within the fight itself. Case in point, Yuji learning Black Flash and basically mastering and equaling the record of consecutive Black Flash attacks in a row, which Hodo was the one teaching him how to use it properly in their fight against Hanami. Or even Maki between chapters 195 and 198, where during Maki's fight against Naoya, she received some mental training from Mio and Daido, but mainly from Mio as he was the one reminding her why she was overthinking and hesitating in chapter 196. That chapter was the main chapter for Maki's mental training in order to calm her down and let her be free from the pressure on herself as well as the evil shadow of the Zenin family which Naioa is trying to do. But after Sumo fighting with Mio, she understood Daido's words of fighting with pure freedom which in chapter 197 you see those words were put into action as she casually dodges Naioa's attacks mid-air. It's like she's flying like a butterfly without a care in the world. Now with these two examples of Yuji and Maki, we see them getting advice during a fight and going through mini training in order to come back stronger or just having the ability to fight back. There wasn't necessarily a power boost or anything, it's literally another character giving advice in order for Yuji and Maki to recompose themselves in their fights. Sukuna and Gojo didn't need advice because they knew what they needed to do but Maki and Yuji are not as experienced or powerful as Gojo and Sukuna so a little bit of guidance goes a long way for them. But with all four examples I would not say these characters gained a massive power up rather I see them all coming up with a strategy mid fight and adapt to the situation in order to win. Even though Maki and Yuji did get some training they still adapted to the strategies in the middle of their fights. I think what Akutami is doing is again he is completely reversed another shonen trope on its head. Usually in most classic shonens, the good guy starts off weak and gets stronger going forward into the story through various training. However, what Akutami has done is that he had his main heroes already really strong from the get-go. If anything, the main emotional villain of the story, Sukuna, starts off weak and gets stronger later on as Yuji eats more of Sukuna's fingers. Yuji is super strong from the first episode. Maki has no cursed energy and yet she is able to fight off cursed spirits. Gojo from the day he was born was the strongest in the verse. What I believe the moral lesson Akutami is trying to tell us is that we are all strong already but sometimes we may need a little bit of guidance along the way to get to where we need to go. Sometimes waiting for our main group of heroes to become strong can be a grueling wait for us fans which is why Jujutsu Kaisen having its main cast of heroes be so strong from the start of the series is so refreshing which is why I believe Akutami has avoided having any training arcs in his story because his characters don't really need them. These characters think on their feet in fights and if they are struggling then the so-called Nakama come in and give advice to the characters to improve their strategy in the fight which is why the fight in this series is where the main character interactions occur. Anyway guys thank you for watching this video. Let me know what you think. Did you originally want to see our main heroes in Jujutsu Kaisen to have a dedicated training arc or do you like how Akutami is laying out his story by having the characters learn on the go in each of their fights? This will be an interesting debate so guys comment below and of course don't forget to subscribe to the Shaman Truck.